This is just lighting up a bit. Cool. Can I start? Yep. So this is the homepage of Ethos, and with a brief like description of what it is, and here you are able to log in or sign up, whatever you need to do. Um, over here we have little summarized versions of what data is in the system. So over here we have, at the moment, there's only fish data in the system as well as SAS data, but once the system has invertebrate species data, this circle will be populated, and then obviously the same for the algae data. Um, so over here you can see that we have 32,042 records of fish and 11,367 sites in the system. And what the color-coded pie chart is showing you what um, proportion of the fish are native, non-native, and translocated. And then below we have the partners and the funders associated with the project. Um, so I'm just going to quickly log in. Then, yeah, if you're a first-time user, obviously you will sign in, sign up. And it takes you to your map. Just for a load second. So all the dots are the, um, the sites. So the green dots are single sites, and then the yellow dots are the clusters of sites. And yeah, so that's how we try to display all the data. And it's all done using this key over here to know what you're looking at. So I'm just going to start by explaining the toolbar and each icon and what they mean. So at the bottom, you can change your base map to different styles you like. Um, yeah. So that's the topography. The satellite. Plain black and white, plain grayscale. And if you need to know the source of the layer, you can click the I button down there, and that will provide the information that you need if you desire that. Um, then the next icon is uh, you're allowed to copy your permalink of the map. So in case you want to share it with a colleague or someone else, you just click there and copy and paste. Then this icon allows you to print the map as is. It's quite nifty. And then over here, this icon allows you to capture a single occurrence. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail about how to capture the data at the end. But yeah, this is just a, a simple way to do it over here. Then you can locate your site either by type, if you know the site's coordinates, you can type it in here following an example. Or there's even an option to locate by farm portion code, if you know that. Then we have the spatial layers. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So this list of layers is by no means fixed. They were kind of um, what we got from our workshops and meetings as the most important. So this, layer, these list, this list can change and um, be added or subtracted layers, but at the moment this is what the list is. So. Yeah, um, so the site is on obviously all the time. Um, then the administrator as well. You can go rivers. And by removing, remove the ledge, just click on bus. And then water management areas. And then if you need to know the source or the metadata of the layer, you can also just click on the blue button at the top. And that provides you with information. <coughs> um, then there's also primary catchments. Sorry. 
And we've been collaborating with them. As the DG said, they've been a great supporter for us. And uh, they actually helped us with the first biodiversity information management forum that we did with the ministry. Now they've offered to um, allow us to join a, a workshop they're having today where they are um, rolling out the first uh, um, example of their information system. Yep. Say, so, Captain. Yeah, so what we'll be seeing is there, um, So yeah, there's the, the list or the layers that we have provided. So I've just had a little bit of a zoom issue. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. So sorry about that. <laughs> so is the facial layers. Um, then here is where you do all your searches, as well as filter. You, you allow to refine your search according to these um, different. Um, Filters. Invertebrates or algae. Algae is, as mentioned, for version three. Then you to select um, your temporal scale. So if you only want to see sites or records from between 1957 and 2019 and only for February, then you filter that way. And you can see 987 sites are between that time scale. And then your spatial scale. So here, again, we have a list of um, spatial layers, which we decided on through the prioritization process. And let me just show you. So, Ecological zones, river catchments, administrative boundaries, in FIPAs, strategic water source areas, critical biodiversity areas, management areas. So if in, you just want to see the Berg River water management area, that's how you will filter it. And go. You need it into a site, just shift and buy for that area. All right, and um, that is it for the spatial scale. Then you also allow filter by ecological conditions related to SAS. So here it's also it's coming soon for version three. So if you only want to see critically modified sites, you'd select that filter and search. Then we also have for origin, so you can select unnative, translocated, or native. And within native, you can select 
out of our five categories of endemism. And it's important to um, always click the apply filter button once you've selected your filter. The conservation status, the, the conservation status that you want to filter by. Then for reference category, we have database, peer-reviewed scientific articles, published reports, theses, and unpublished data. So yeah, the, those are all the data sources that the sites are linked to. Um, yeah, and then study reference. So for instance, say you know of a paper from which you want to get the data. Hold on. For instance, Jeremy's 2014 work. We go there. Yeah, okay. I remember to clear the filter. We go there and search. And there is 16 sites. From Jeremy's work. Yeah, um, then there's also an option to filter by collector or assessor. So if you know the person who collected or assessed the data, you can just type their name in. So for instance, say you want to look for Dean's work, then you... Sorry, just need to reset it. <clears throat> I filter and search, and then nine sites show up. <laughs> okay. Then at the bottom, we have an option to filter. Um, validated or non-validated data. Oh, yeah, so there's signs over there. Um, then there's also an option to filter by validated data or non-validated. So this is how initially we're going to control the quality of. So yeah, so at the moment all the records should be validated because it comes from. Uh, peer-reviewed scientific literature, GBIF, and all of that. Great, so that is for the filters. Now I'm going to do a few searches. Um, I'm going to start with doing... I just want to check that all my layers are all... Um, so I'm going to start with the species search. So I'm going to search for Galaxia sabratus, and that also has three letters of the species you want to search, and then it should give you a list to choose from. And in the search bar, you can also um, search for common names, scientific names, river names, as well as site names. So for species search. So it brings up the site. So this is the number of sites where the galaxy, as well as the taxa. So you can um, get more information about the actual species. On the left, I mean on the right, you get your overview panel, which gives you the species details. So it's taxon name, common name, occurrences, and the number of sites that it's found in, as well as provides information about its origin, endemism, and conservation status. And then also images, which from in this case were harvested from GBIF. Then from here, you click on this button to detail dashboard. Let me just zoom out. So this is um, provides you more information about the actual species. So over here, the distribution map, which shows you where the species is on. Still 
and you'll also see buttons that say download csv which means is also obviously downloadable then you have a little bit of an overview panel overview table with the same details as on the overview panel but you can also download it and then some information about the taxonomy and if you move over to the side here is a full occurrence table show code the river name and occurrences so the number the number of individuals found at each site and then at the bottom you get the occurrence graph over time so you can see the records are um, found in 1906 all the way to 2019 and then again some origin endemism conservation status information with a uh, bigger images then to exit your detailed dashboard you just click on the, the green X. Right, so that is for the, the species. Now I'm going to do a site search. You can search for a site either by typing it in the search bar, or if you know it's located on the app, you can just click on the dot, um, or you locate it by coordinates like I showed you over there. So for now, I'm gonna type in a site. So I'm gonna do the Berg. And the site comes up. So this also takes you to a oh. Okay, it's just loading. <laughs> okay. Just wanna um see. Hold on. Right, so if it's the same as the um, C panel, here are details about the individual sites. So here you'll get a site description, your site coordinates, um, ecological region, eco region, sorry, river, and geomorphological zones. And then over here you'll get a little bit of a proportional break of the taxa found at the site. So for now, they're only found at the site. So this is providing information about the origin, endemism, and conservation status. Um, I'll get into this now. And the bottom here is just some climate graphs if you're interested in, in the ambient um, temperature or the mean annual rainfall. Um, yeah, so now from the site overview panel, you're going to want to go in dashboard so you just click on this button over here so for now we want to see fish there and it provides you with the distribution map, current charts and yeah, so I'm just going to show you the whole thing until I zoom in on aspects so here is the distribution map showing you where your site you go down, it's an overview, tape, overview table, which is also, again, downloadable, providing you with all sorts of information, like the, the primary, secondary, tertiary catchments, water management areas, eco-region, level one, etc., as well as the records and sites, so the number of species found at the site. So in this case, there is four, and there were five occurrences, details about origin, endemism, conservation status, and then some more information about the the actual um, taxon found at the site. And then here is the button that I explained earlier about downloading as a CSV. Then here are the occurrence charts. So it's a, again, a proportional breakdown. This also is the same kind of pie charts that were on the, o on the overview panel origin in the minimum activation status as well as the sampling methods in this case unfortunately unspecified. and then here the occurrences over time so in case the site was sampled in 2015 and 2015 as a 
portion of the brain that does that. So what's cool is you can also out the species of the sea on the up with, with most of the, the graphs that we'll be serving up. And again, so if you only want to see native across the conservation status, and then the endemism. Yeah, so that's it for the fish single site detail dashboard. Um, and now I'm going to be showing you the SAS dashboards, but I'm going to do it in the opposite way. I'm going to do first a, oh wait, I think, let me show you the multi-site fish detail dashboard. So you can also search for a complete area and look at all the sites within the area. So for instance, if you're interested in the Breda River, main stem, you can type it in here. And then where it says sites, there's 42, you just click show in dashboard. So this gives you an over, a full detailed dashboard of the sites found in the Breda. Again, you got distribution map as well as your charts describing origin, endemism, and conservation status. And an overview table with number of species sites as well as origin, endemism, and conservation status numbers, as well as a full table with all the um, species found at the site. Then, yeah, and then again, with all the species, you can go to see more detail, whatever you're interested in. And then, non-native, translocated native graphs, conservation status, and endemism. So yeah, that is for a fish multi -site. Now I'm going to go into the SAS. So as I said, I'm going to start with the SAS showing you a multi-site, and then I'm going to zone in to a single site. So again, the sites are 36, you just click on show dashboard. And then you just do the polemic open SAS dashboard. So again, you got your distribution for the sites within the Breda main stem. And then um, over here, you got each site with their um, SAS scores. And then if you hover over the bar, it will give you the SAS score as well as the date of the sampling. And each bar is um, characterized according to the ecological category. So yeah, so the number of taxa and your AT for each site that you search for in, within the, the um, Yonkersuk. Then you got a SAS summary table, which gives you your site code with your SAS averages, as well as the min and max, and then your number of taxa and ASP team, as well as the number of assessments per site. And then there's the details about the latest SAS survey that was done at the site. Um, yeah, so that's just a long table, which also then over here you have your ecological condition charts. And again, if you hover over each dot, it will give you your SAS score as well as your ASPT and the date of, of the survey. And then you have a summary of your actual SAS form that was submitted, um, showing the taxa that were found at each site. So if you draw See the summation site, whether there would be one. Sorry, just something. I'll get there. Cool. So, yeah, so that's your summarized SAS form. And then at the bottom, you have your biotope rating graphs. 
So even especially historical records don't have information about the biotope ratings. So only modern day surveys have the biotope ratings. But this is where you will see um, the, the biotope ratings per site. Great. So that is for a multi-site SAS dashboard. And so if you want to maybe look at a specific site of interest, you can just um, go onto your SAS summary table and just click onto the site over here. And that will take you to your single site SAS dashboard. So here, again, you got your distribution. Um, again, another summary table showing geomorphological zones, site coordinates, site description, catchment details, ecoregions, all of those sorts of details. Um, then you got some information about the earlier survey as well as the latest records. Um, SAS scores, number of taxa SPT, and then a, also another summarized version of SAS form that um, was submitted. Again, all of it's downloadable. And then, yeah, so then this is a full table with the SAS scores, number of taxa, and ASPT per each date of a sample that the um, sample that the site. Then we got your your SAS score graphs and number of tags per date of sampling, and then a proportional breakdown of the sensitivity of the taxa found at sites. Again, the biotope ratings. Unfortunately, this one at this site didn't have its biotope ratings. And then a ecological category graph. Again, if you hover over the the dots, it gives you information about the SAS score as well as the ASPT. And then at the bottom over here, where it says data sources, this is just a placeholder where metadata and study references will be listed for the data that's from where the data that you're looking at comes from. And it will be the same for the fish dashboards as well. So, yeah, I showed you most of the searches. Um, now, you have to actually upload data in the system. So if you know where you want to add your um, your information, you can just click on a dot or you can locate it by coordinates or whatever you need. And then this will bring you an overview panel of the site. And then where it says dashboard, you go down to forms. So say I want to add fish at that specific site that I selected, you click the add fish button. And it will show you the map that you've selected for the site. And from here, you fill in your details. So your date, which you can select from that little calendar, your name, or whoever is the person that collected the, the, spe the species. The and then you can also specify the reference category if it's also applicable. So if it's coming from a peer-reviewed scientific article, you'd select that. Then the biotope. So we've decided on classifying our biotopes to slow deep, slow shallow, fast deep, and fast shallow. And then, hmm. oh, and then the list of species as provided. So over here, there's only one species, but this is to do with the fact that this is the only species known to be found in that quaternary catchment in the system at the moment. So that is why usually there's like a long list if there's a few species found. But for instance, here yeah, there's just one. But if you did find a different species to this, you can add taxon and fill in the details. Um, so yeah, you just would fill out the form. So you'd select observed. If you have abundance numbers, for instance, two, as well as provide the sampling methods. So it was done by electrofishing, and you can select the time or area. So if you did it for 10 minutes, and then all that information is provided. And then, yeah, and then you just collect, sub, you just click submit. That's fake. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's how you do the fish, upload fish. I'll just for now.
Um, say you wanted to add a SAS sample here. You click on the dot, and then an overview panel will come up, and you go down to the forms, and you click on the add SAS. So here is a, the, the form for you to fill out, which is really simple and easy and automated. So we'd really encourage everyone to um, uh, rate their biotopes. So you on all the, the ratings. Again, you can do over there, time, assessor, and source. There'll be a little bit more information in the upcoming versions about source with like reference category as it was for the fish. And then, yeah, so then here you just populate your, your and it's all automated, so you can only put in the SAS notation, and then it auto populates your final column, override your final column, because obviously it might, the BCD situation might cut awry. So you can also change your final column if it's, if it's not calculating it correctly. And then, Provide you with the SAS score, number of taxa, and A. Um, and then, yeah, there's a space for comments, and then you just click, you just click submit like before. Yeah, so that's your SAS form. And then, how to update upload data with the, the form a little bit more efficient, but I'll show you for interest sake. So, also click on the menu bar to go to upload data and you can either upload a shape file if you want to add a layer or you can also over here upload your CSV and there's a template that you can download so that you follow the structure of the template to download um, and that's how you would do it that way. If you have multiple sites and records to add you could do it this way. Then there's one way to do it. If you go to the toolbar, you capture single currents, and if you know the place, you just click on the map, and then you fill up the details like before for the for the specific site. Yeah. So now I'll just do a quick case study of an example of how you might use the system. So. Say, for instance, you're interested in, you're a fish scientist, and you want to know the number of endangered species in the Hurut Winterhook um, catchment, water source area. So you first click your fish module, then you can go down to your, let just get in here. You go to the conservation status, and you apply endangered filter. And you go to origin, apply your data filter, and then say you'll go to your strategic water source area and click on the Hurut Winterhook. And then there are 158 sites over here, and then you'll show. So if you're interested in those. That kind of information. This is the kind of detail report that you'd want. Information you can download everything and include it in your report or for whatever reason you need it. Um, yeah, I think I'm done now. If anyone has any questions or anything extra they want to see. Now we can sort of throw it open to any questions if you want to drill down into any specific uh, aspect of the of the